Today, I'm exploring this closed canopy forest in the northern state of Maine. Currently, everything is green and growing, but in a short few months, this forest will be covered in snow and this stream will be frozen solid. So what happens then? How do the plants and animals who live here adapt to this extreme change in weather? Let's find out together in this episode all about the taiga biome. The taiga, also known as the boreal forest, is the largest land biome on Earth. It stretches across the northern parts of North America, Europe, and Asia, just south of the Arctic Circle. This special place experiences long cold winters and short mild summers, creating a perfect place to live for a distinct set of plants and animals. A biome is a region defined by a specific climate in the plants and animals that have adapted to live there. The taiga biome is found here near the top of the biome pyramid, just under the tundra. This biome is made up of regions too cold to support a variety of vegetation, but warm enough to be littered with lakes, rivers, and wetlands. The taiga is one of the main three forest biomes. The other two are the temperate forest, and the tropical rainforest. The taiga is the driest and coldest of the three. Despite its vastness, the boreal forest is among the least biodiverse biomes, consisting almost exclusively of coniferous trees. It's one of only two biomes so intensely dominated by a single class of plant species, the other being grasslands. The extreme cold is what sets this biome apart from other forest biomes. Beneath these towering trees, the forest floor is covered with a thick layer of moss and fallen needles. The soil in the boreal forest is often thin and poor in nutrients because this conifer leaf litter is highly acidic. On top of that, the cold slows down the process of decomposition. This means dead plants and animals take a really long time to break down, making it even more difficult for nutrients to get back into the soil. These cold soils in the taiga regions overlap the zone of permafrost. The thin surface layer of permafrost thaws in the warmer seasons, but then freezes again in the winter. But the soil below the active layer remains continuously frozen. In other areas, a layer of bedrock lies just below the layer of soil, which is tricky because permafrost and rock will trap water in the top layers of soil. This creates shallow bogs known as muskigs. Muskigs are deceptive because they can look like solid ground. They are covered with moss, short grasses, and sometimes even trees. But really, the ground is actually wet and squishy. Scientists probably wouldn't say squishy, but it's squishy. The extreme climate and challenging soil really limits the type of vegetation that can survive here in the boreal forest. Coniferous trees such as fir, pine, and spruce dominate the landscape, while deciduous trees of temperate forests lose their leaves in winter. Conifers don't seasonally drop their needles. For this reason, conifers are also called evergreens. Here in the closed canopy forest, these evergreen trees grow close together like an umbrella. This canopy soaks up most of the sunlight, only letting a little bit peek through to the ground. Under the canopy of the trees, few other plants grow. In some moist areas, you can find ferns, willow shrubs, berries, and sedges, but mostly the forest floor is covered with a soft green carpet of mosses. You can find moss growing on rocks, on tree trunks, and in the pits formed by upturned trees. How have these coniferous or evergreen trees literally stood the test of time in this harsh biome? It simply comes down to the fact that these trees are better cold adapted than other tree types. These trees begin to grow early in the spring, as soon as temperatures are favorable, rather than wasting valuable time and energy growing new leaves. The dark green color of their leaves and triangle-shaped sides help them catch and absorb as much of the sun's light as possible. Their shape also distributes snow across the body of the tree, preventing too much weight from resting on the top branches that would otherwise cause them to break. Needles offer a smaller surface area than leaves, which also helps with snow distribution, 
The waxy coating of needles, known as the cuticle, locks in moisture and prevents transpiration. If you're still here liking this video, let us know and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Even though this forest is only comfortable for a short amount of time, well, comfortable for me anyway, there are many animals that brave the cold and make their home here in the taiga. In this biome, you will find mammals like moose, black bear, elk, lynx, caribou, snowshoe hare, wolverine, beaver, mink, ermine, timber wolf, red squirrel, lemmings, and voles. Moose are the largest animals in the taiga. When the winter ice melts, they spend much of their time swimming in lakes and rivers to keep cool on warm days. In the summer, they eat willow and broadleaf trees and will also consume aquatic plants while wading through ponds and lakes. Northern flying squirrels play a crucial role in the taiga ecosystem by eating truffles and dispersing truffle spores through their droppings. Thank you. The fungi form mutually beneficial relationships with the trees by providing the trees with water and nutrients. In return, the trees provide the fungi with sugars that they obtain through photosynthesis. The fearless wolverine dominates this landscape through its ability to intimidate and fight larger predators like wolves or even bears. Even though they are no bigger than a medium-sized dog, the wolverine is generally regarded as a solitary nocturnal hunter, but they are also successful scavengers. A large portion of their diet comes from scavenging carrion, typically the remains of elk or caribou. From the largest animals to the smallest, many of the food webs here in the taiga are dependent upon insects. Conifers serve as hosts for a variety of wood-boring beetles. These insects aid in wood decomposition and nutrient release. Because of all the standing water, due to poor drainage, there is an intense insect season, which we may be in right now. Mosquitoes are the most noticeable to humans. The good news is that mosquitoes and their larvae are a food source for many fish and bird species. <sighs> Mosquitoes and other insects provide food for dozens of species of birds, like warblers and swallows that come to the boreal forest in the warm months to breed. Grosbeaks and crossbills and finches feed on the abundant seeds of conifer cones. Predatory birds are here in the taiga as well, such as the northern goshawk and sharp-shinned hawk. Woodpeckers are specialized predators of wood-inhabiting insects and are important in the control of spruce beetle population. While searching for food, woodpeckers excavate tree cavities, which other animals use as homes. Animals that live in this climate have certain adaptations or characteristics that help them survive. Some adaptations are physical, while others are behavioral. The name of the game is to spend less energy than you gain through consuming food. And, of course, to stay warm. In general, the mammals are larger here in this biome than in the more temperate regions. Having a larger body allows for better heat retention to survive the harsh winters. Along with its large size, moose use their long legs to move through deep snow and strong jaws to eat twigs and bark in the winter. Small animals also grow thick fur to keep them warm. The lynx and its favorite prey, the snowshoe hare, both have snowshoe-like feet adapted for weight distribution. This allows both the hare and the lynx to travel across the surface of the snow rather than just sink down into it. The snowshoe hare has one other trick up its furry sleeve. Along with other small mammals like ermine, the snowshoe hare undergoes an annual change in the color of its fur. They will transition from brownish or grayish in the summer to pure white in the winter, effectively camouflaging themselves with the snow. Wolves exhibit helpful group behavior, living in packs and are excellent hunters, often working together to take down prey like elk, deer, and rabbits. Bears spend the warm summer eating as much as they possibly can to build up fat. When winter arrives, they hibernate. This restful behavior allows them to stay warm and conserve energy. Throughout the fall, red squirrels gather nuts, 
seeds, and cones, storing them in hidden locations. This serves as a vital food source during the winter when foraging becomes more challenging, if not impossible. Fortunately, red squirrels are known for their excellent memory, which helps them locate these treasures even under layers of snow. Wildfires are a natural and important part of the taiga ecosystem. These fires help regenerate forests by clearing out excess ground cover and old growth, allowing new plants to thrive. Wildfires that grow too big and too hot can be destructive and lead to habitat loss. The taiga is also susceptible to major outbreaks of insects, like the bark beetles we mentioned earlier. These insects can weaken or kill trees over large areas, further impacting the health and stability of the forest. Melting permafrost due to warmer temperatures can lead to increased flooding in an area with already poor drainage. This can damage the soil composition or wash away the thin layer completely, just leaving exposed bedrock. Deforestation due to logging and other human activities is a major threat to the taiga. Human activity can make the effects of these natural hazards worse by fragmenting habitats, increasing erosion, and altering soil composition. I've put a link to help you learn more about ways you can help the boreal forest down in the description. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Hello? Hello.